Well, thanks for staying with us. Now, uh, going over to the Major League Soccer, this um, league actually began in 1996. The creation of the league was part of a successful bid by the United States to host the 1994 World Cup, seeking to capitalize on the expected surge in football popularity in the country in the wake of its hosting of the world's most celebrated sports tournament. Now, the league's first championship game, known as the MLS Cup, was won by DC United, based in Washington, DC, and that club and uh, the Los Angeles Galaxy have captured the most league titles with four championships each. While MLS is not as prestigious as European football leagues such as the English Premier League, uh, the exposure to the growing American football market led a number of international stars, including David Beckham, Thierry Henry, and Andrea Perlo to apply their trade in the MLS. We have Luis Dory, a FIFA intermediary license at Major League Soccer, joining us this morning to talk about this. Great to have you with us, Luis. Hey, how you guys doing today? Definitely a pleasure being here and uh, being able to share some of the things that I've been able to pick along the way uh, to the audience. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. How are you holding up over there in the United States of America? Yeah, we're trying to hold it down. I'm here in Florida right now, and uh, it's been a huge surge of the COVID-19 cases here, but it's something that is usual now here. We're trying to do our very best to cope with it. Nice. Now let's talk about the, the structure of the MLS. A lot of players seem to, to want to run to that part of the world to play football. What exactly are they doing right from building the teams and all? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think um, it's the opportunity, really. The league is growing uh, exponentially uh, over the past few years, and there are new opportunities that are coming in year in and year out. And there are a huge influx of international players coming in, you know, especially from South America. We have seen that over the past few years. We have seen a couple African players coming into the league, but I do believe that there needs more African players because the, the continent has some great talent. But the structure is great because it's something that is different comparing to the other leagues around the world um, because um, the MLS is structured in a different way. Um, it has a, a single entity structure comparing to the multiple ownership structure. Uh, the reason why, because it's such a fairly brand new league. You know, the league was established in 1996 and uh, first had about 10 teams. And right now there's approximately, there is 26 teams now, 23 from the United States and three from Canada. And the United States actually uh, has a co-joining league with, uh, with the Canadians. So that's a great thing for the expansion of the league. And um, they have maintained the same identity as far as the single structure, single entity structure, because being a fairly brand new league, uh, you need a pool of investors to come in and uh, maintain that league. Because the United States, uh, the MLS is in a situation where the other leagues around the world are not because they are competing with the major leagues here, such as the NBA, such as the NFL as well. So the pool of fans is very slim. So in order to be able to get some of those fans, you have to put a good product out there. And I think the MLS has been able to do that over the past few years. And a lot of international players are able to see that the product is in the field, the quality is on the field. You have seen the likes of Pirlo, like you mentioned, you know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic was here. And um, they just signed a Blaise Matuidi uh, a few days ago to Miami FC. So there's a lot of potential here. The benefits are great and the teams are, the valuation of the teams are also increasing every single year. And the investors actually want to purchase these teams now because they are generating great amount of revenue. Mm, nice. You know, when, when I hear USA, I think NBA, I think the NHL, but when it comes to playing football, I, I, I really wonder how the clubs have been able to get fans to love football playing right there and on, on the football page because it's quite difficult when you see when you talk about the michael jordans of this world it could be brands of this world the shaquille o'neal's of this world and you compare them with football players in the usa it's quite difficult how have the clubs been able to achieve getting a couple of fans to love the game i believe it's really like i mentioned earlier it's staying true to the identity um 
the MLS, uh, the reality is, is a, is a brand new league. Uh, it came in 1996, comparing to the other leagues around the world, you know, England. Uh, you have these leagues that have been playing over 100 years, you know. So it's, 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 it's to catch up with a lot of those leagues is very difficult. So they've been able to really just maintain truth to the identity. They can never be an NBA right away. They can never be an NFL right away. So by becoming... Um, true to the identity uh, as far as, you know, the single entity is allowed them to really expand, uh, broaden up a little bit more of their marketing and uh, engage more of the younger fans because the younger fans are the ones that are actually boosting the value of the NFL, uh, the MLS. Yeah. And uh, we have seen that over the past few years, especially with the, with the social media. A lot of the younger fans are looking more to the European leagues and bringing that flavor here into the American league. So that identity has helped them develop, has helped them um, maintain a very strong structure and the teams uh, have been able to follow that. I think the MLS has been able to uh, gather these teams because the MLS is different from the other leagues around the world in this way. They own all the teams in the league. They own all of them. And every single uh, contract that is run by in the, uh, the, in the league is actually goes through the MLS first. So they actually have to sign those contracts before the player can actually um, participate in the league. And they assign those acquisition, uh, acquisition rights to um, the clubs. So as being able to own those contracts and also being able to own those teams, they have a, um, a pool of investors, which they have a, uh, they own a particular a stake in the league. So th that stake allowed them to actually run the clubs. So as they run the clubs, they are able to actually implement some of the flavor into those clubs. So by the end of the day, when there is the revenue that needs to be uh, shared among all the owners of the club, it goes first to the MLS and afterwards it gets redistributed back into the league and also to the clubs. Hence the reason why the MLS uh, has been able to flourish by maintaining the same structure. And right now um, it's growing substantially and the clubs now are able to stand on their own leg. And uh, some of the clubs are even seeking to become independent by themselves, but the MLS does not want to get away from the same model that has allowed the, the league to succeed over the past few years. We did talk about what happened recently in the MLS where um, some players actually from FC Dallas and Nashville SC, uh, they, were, they were met with some booze from a small crowd after they took a knee in support of the Black Lives Matter movement before a match in Texas. Uh, is there any update on this? And uh, don't you think it was a wrong call for, for these fans to do this to these players who decided to take a knee? To be frank with you, it's nothing new. It's nothing new at all. I think social media in this pandemic uh, has been able to shine the light on an issue that has been prevailing for a very, very, very long time. And now the world can see exactly what is going on inside of these lines. And um, my point of view is um, I'm in support, you know, of the athletes that stand up for this cause uh, 100%. You know, this issue uh, needs to be fixed. It's unfortunate that we do have people out there that still feel that type of way um, because we're talking about a, um, a social issue that affects a lot of people, affects a lot of black people that feel that every single day in their skin and they are able to witness those, those atrocities that happen uh, every single time for years and years and years. And we have seen athletes you know, stand up for this cause over the past uh, few years and they've been blackballed and some of them even out of the leagues. And um, right now, as the world can see, um, it's, it's just an issue that needs to be fixed. But you wanna know the truth is that it's never going to be fixed. Uh, mm. Racism is still going to go on and people still going to still feel the same way how they feel. In this specific um, instance, you know, the players taking a knee and uh, they were the national anthem. I think uh, a lot of the, the American fans, uh, it's unfortunate that when they do go watch the games, uh, they do not like to mix, uh, mix up uh, social issues with uh, their sports. 
and they they can relate they cannot relate to exactly how some people do feel so for them it's just a matter of you know i'm going to watch my game and i don't want to see any type of protests or anything like that so but it's going to continue this is not going to stop and we are going to see that i think as black people as people that are fighting for this social injustice is something that we've been fighting for years and years and years we just got to continue to do what we do and keep fighting and keep uh, getting a life better and get into a, a place that uh, we one day can look back and say, you know what, there's been improvement, but we cannot expect the attitude of a lot of people a change. We can change those people's hearts. We just have to do a part. Mm. Wow, uh, nicely put right there. But then I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. And I will look forward to having you again where we can look at the African players who ply their trade in the MLS. Once again, thank you, Louis Dore, for joining us today. My pleasure, brother. Thank you so much and uh, for having me here today. You right. guys have a great day.